Australia's biggest companies, CBA, CSL. You can't go very far without mentioning the three biggest miners, BHP, Rio Tinto and Fortescue. But what's the difference between the three? Which of those make the most money? And finally, what's the best stock investment to make with a small amount of cash? Today, I'll be going through how each of these three companies compare to each other in terms of the projects, products and financials and future. Now, let's get started. Rio Tinto has majority ownership in a mine near Labrador City in Canada. This is in joint partnership to form a company called the Iron Ore Company of Canada. But the main bread and butter mine for Rio Tinto is right here in Western Australia in the Pilbara, where they operate 16 mines in the region and dubbing their product as a Pilbara blend of iron, which makes up 70% of the iron ore product portfolio. BHP also mines most of its iron ore in the Pilbara region in Western Australia, but also owns and operates copper mines in Olympic Dam north of Adelaide and a coal mine in Bowen Basin in central Queensland. And so, BHP is more diversified in terms of its products, so it's more insulated against soft iron ore prices. Fortescue Metals Group, again, also mines iron ore in the Pilbara region, but holds the largest rights to the area by land size, bigger than both BHP and Rio Tinto. However, FMG only mines iron ore exclusively and does not mine for any other resources, so it's not as diversified as the other two. This can be a double-edged sword depending on iron ore prices as they won't have another product to fall back on if prices drop. For BHP, iron ore makes up half of the entire revenue for the 2020 financial year. Copper makes up a quarter of their revenue, coal makes up 15% of their revenue per year, and petroleum brings up the rear at 10% of revenue. For Rio Tinto, Iron ore is a bigger proportion of their revenue than BHP, with 50% of the entire revenue generated by iron ore for the 2020 financial year. Rio also mines for aluminium which makes up 20% of their total revenue. Copper and diamond mining makes up 11% of their revenue, and the energy and mineral segment brings in the final 11% of their revenue. So you can see that both companies are well diversified with their product portfolios, with BHP a little more diversified by dialing down the iron ore percentage and upping the copper percentage when compared to Rio Tinto. FMG on the other hand gets 100% of its revenue from iron ore. Now this way of depicting each of the three mining companies is great for showing the product portfolio and their diversity, but let's look at them a more realistic way by comparing their actual revenues. For BHP, iron ore generated $20.8 billion in the 2020 financial year, followed by copper with $10.6 billion, coal with $6.2 billion, and another $2 billion from other sources, giving a total of $43 billion for the year. For Rio Tinto, iron ore generated $27.5 billion, making them the biggest iron ore miner in the world. Aluminium made $9.3 billion, Copper and diamond made $5.4 billion, and energy and minerals made a further $5 billion for a total consolidated sales revenue of $44.6 billion. Finally, FMG was able to generate a total of $12.8 billion purely from its iron ore mining. This is a much better graph to show the overall scale and size of each company. Note that all of this is in US dollars because the trade is always made in US dollars. In terms of dividends for shareholders of each of the companies, BHP is currently paying around $2 per share annually and fully franked, which gives it a gross dividend yield of around 5.4%. This means that they are paying out around 66 of their net earnings in dividends, so still have a fair bit of room to invest in growth or pay out more in dividends later. Rio Tinto has a bigger share price, so it currently pays out around $7 per share annually and fully franked as well. This gives them a slightly higher gross dividend yield at 7.2%. This correlates to around an 80% payout ratio, which is still acceptable for stability, but is also a little bit higher than BHP. Fortescue has been paying out around $2 per share recently and fully franked as well, so it gives it the highest gross dividend yield of the three companies at 12%. This is a 79% payout ratio for them, so despite the high yield, seems to be sustainable while the iron ore prices remain high. 
let's take a quick look at company financials as well. Now, we can spend forever on these numbers, so as always, the best thing to look at when you're short on time is the underlying EBITDA, which is the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. This is the most important metric because a company's value comes from its ability to earn money, and EBITDA shows this while excluding all of the things that are outside of the company's control. For BHP, we can see a steady upwards trend from $11 billion in 2016 up to $23 billion in 2019. In 2020, we have a slight decline in earnings, but that's expected from the pandemic disruptions that have occurred. This is showing consistent and reliable growth expected from a blue chip company, and the net debt is also becoming lower over the years. Rio Tinto is in a very similar position with an EBITDA of $11 billion in 2016 and slowly increasing to up to $24 billion in 2020. The pandemic situation has favoured Rio Tinto slightly more than BHP though, as the larger iron ore segment output pays off when the iron ore prices trend higher. Fortescue has had a similar run to BHP and Rio Tinto, but their 100% exposure to iron ore has only meant that they've taken full advantage of the higher prices per megaton, and so has had the highest EBITDA growth over the last five years with $3 billion in 2016, all the way up to $8.3 billion in 2020. So you can see that earnings generated by mining and resources companies are a combination of two things. First is the resource output, which is controlled by the company. So the more you mine, the more money that you can earn. But the other important factor is the market price of the resource, which is outside of the control of the company. This depends on the demand of the resource, and more often than not, is the main driver of company earnings. And for this reason, it can sometimes actually be more important to keep an eye on the market price than the actual company output. The future direction of a company is just as important as its current performance because it determines how safe an investment in that company could be. For BHP, it is embarking on a cleanup of its coal segment by reducing or selling off those assets. It is attempting to exit the oil and gas industry and completely shutting down thermal coal. BHP has laid out plans to try and increase output of future-driven resources like copper and nickel, which is likely to have increased demand as the global technology improves. Rio Tinto is in a much better position than BHP because it has no fossil fuel products in its portfolio. Nonetheless, Rio has indicated that it will cut carbon emissions by 30% in 2020, and for that to happen will take a lot of capital and technological investment. This could mean more debt to be taken on in the short term so that it benefits in the long term. But Rio also needs to prevent more public relations disasters like blasting of the cultural case from happening in order to fulfill their future vision. Fortescue has also pledged decarbonisation plans for its mining operations by 2040. It is looking to add energy production to its portfolio by investing a billion dollars in hydrogen power plants. It is actually looking to have green hydrogen operations overtake its iron ore businesses one day, but this will completely depend on the technology advances in this field. If this pays off, FMG will be in a very strong position to overtake the likes of BHP and Rio. But at this stage, this will be a very far off future. So that's my summary of the three biggest mining companies in Australia. Thanks so much for watching. If this video does alright, I'll try my hand at making more of these comparing other industries like banks or utilities. So make sure to subscribe and like and stuff like that. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.